Hi, everybody. It's Georgia Rose from Zencuda. Welcome to the Soul Space Studio at Strong Island Television in beautiful Massapequa, Long Island. I'm so glad to be here tonight. It is my pleasure to spend the next oh, about 50 minutes or so with you. And um, I'm going to see, going to share the show, first of all, to see who's on with me tonight. And um, I have to tell you, I want to just say thank you to everyone who always shares the show every time we're on because we've really been increasing our viewership. And also, I know that I am going to enter anyone who shares the show between now and the end of March into a special drawing for a free reading with me. Now, that reading can be on air if you'd like. We'll have you on the show. Or it can be a private reading. It's up to you, your choice. It could be an astrology reading, a tarot reading, mediumship reading, whatever your little heart desires. So definitely get out there and share the show. This is the biggest astrological week of the year. And um, it's actually followed by next week, which is the second biggest astrological week of the new year, of 2023 anyway. Um, astrological week of 2023. Did I say year? I think I might have. I was watching a lot of videos on YouTube this weekend, and I noticed that um, a lot of the uh, people on YouTube even, and some of the teachers that I watch uh, for both yoga and other things, are misspeaking. So I think that's definitely where Mercury is in the planets and the charts right now. It's all kind of coming in, doing a lot of stuff. So let's see who is on. I got people coming in. Already got a bunch of people sharing the show tonight. So Whoops, sorry. I always I forget to put in. my oh, speaker down. Remember, if you do call into the show today that you want to make sure that your volume is down, I will take live calls and Bobby will be putting that number on the screen. So what is going on out there? If one more person approaches me and says, what's going on? This energy is really weird. I think I'm going to start charging people because I'll make a lot of money every time somebody says that. <laughs> so what is going on? Well, this week alone, we have 11, count them, 11, 11 major transits of planets that are affecting the energy and affecting the way we deal with our lives and what's going on in our lives. So it's going to be a really amazing week of changes. So now Tuesday, as you know, we already changed um, Saturn into Pisces um, from Aquarius. And I did a lot of work, a lot of content about Saturn going into Pisces. So I'm not going to talk too much about that tonight. Saturn going into Pisces was quite a change for a lot of us. If you want more info on that, I have videos on my YouTube channel, Zencuda, and also on my social media pages, uh, Zencuda Soul Space and Georgia Rose. And there's a lot of info on there about Saturn going into Pisces. So I actually just did another. Um, uh, big long post about that on Sunday, which is yesterday. So today I just want to talk a little bit about um, March 13th through 19th and let you guys know kind of what's going to be happening. Uh, generally, of course, I don't know how it's going to affect your personal charts. I can only guess at that if you call into the show. But I will tell you this is the biggest week uh, astrologically of the year, followed by the second biggest, like I just said. Uh, this week we have 11 transits, and I'm not going to go through all of them because your eyes will be rolling back up into your head but I am going to just go into some of the major ones. So the first thing is uh, Juno has entered Taurus. What does that mean? Who is Juno? Why is he in Taurus? Well, basically what that means is Juno is our marriage asteroid. A lot of people refer to it as. And Juno is where in the chart where we like to partner. It shows how we partner. Um, when Juno is transiting in certain people's charts, it also... Um, makes us know that we are probably going to have a relationship or end a relationship, depending on how it's aspected. When I look at Juno in the charts of people that I read, I always I use that as a marriage significator or long-term partnership significator. In other words, I can tell based on the, the uh, um, location and, and conjunctions with other planets or just the house that Juno is in, what your relationships are going to be like or what your long-term marriage is going to be like. Juno entering Taurus is really interesting because it is a place where relationships, partnerships are going to be irrevocably changed in where this energy is. And that can be changed good. Like you might see a lot of engagements and proposals. It also could mean that you're going to see a lot of breakups. Um, and also in the partnership stages of business and anybody who is in business long-term with someone, you may see that change and that irrevocably change. 
Um, this is also partnerships that are long term. And by that, I mean, not just romantic. I mean, anyone that you are in partnership with, it could be on a project, it could be a business, it could be charity, it could be anything that you really takes up a long, large part of your time. Those relationships, you're going to see that people are going to start to have new perspectives about them and see them in a new way. And that's going to bring some irrevocable changes to the relationship. Doesn't mean they're going to be bad. That doesn't mean they're going to be good, but they're going to be changed. The other thing that's going on this week is blind spots. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that we're going to have some blind spots in our life that maybe we are completely blind about, meaning we're angry at the wrong person, we've misunderstood something, or it's going to be that the blind spot is suddenly revealed. Um, so these are particularly going to be blind spots about our talents and what we're really good at. And they're also going to be um, blind spots about um, things with to do with financials, financials and money. So I thought that was really interesting that this is the energy this week and we're having these um, banks collapse and we're having a lot of things coming out and be revealed in those terms. So very interesting there as well. Now, what I want to also say is that the blind spots that we're seeing, and this is because of Pluto and Saturn right now, you know, Saturn just moved into that area of Pisces where now Pluto's finishing out the last degrees of Capricorns and they can't see each other. You know, the zodiac wheel is a circle. And sometimes when you're in certain parts of a circle, you can't see each other, right? Unless you really, really bend around to look and focus. So Saturn and Pluto are trying to kind of help each other out a little bit, but Saturn's really tired. It just finished a really long journey through Aquarius and now it's in Pisces. So it's tired, but Pluto's still raring to go, raring to finish up his work in, in Capricorn. So Pluto's like, hey, Saturn, where are you? I can't see you anymore. And Saturn's like, leave me alone. I'm kind of tired. So they're working at odds. And when planets have a conversation where they're working at odds, especially Pluto and Saturn, that's going to lead to a lot of triangulation. So you will see a lot of power struggles and a lot of conflict and partnerships this week that are triangles you know, involving three people, three different ways, something that is definitely triangle. Um, now, remember, it's hard when you have conflicts that are triangular because a triangle is one of the most solid shapes, right? That base of a triangle, it's very hard to get the energy to move. So you really want to make sure that you're focusing on the right thing in this energy. Um, Pluto, wherever it is in your chart, is going to be really uncompromising. So just generally speaking, when you find yourself in those triangle or triangular conflicts, there's going to be one person who is completely uncompromising, one person who's too tired to really go through it and work into it. And then there's probably going to be the third person. You're going to be one of the three that really wants some resolution. So it's a rough week. The next two weeks are kind of rough weeks, very intense. The intensity is going to actually speed up as the week goes in, it's going to get more intense. This is the timing that I have been talking about since, gosh, probably last September of October. Remember, I kept telling you towards the end of 2022, make sure that you finish up, tie your loose ends, get everything, all your ducks in a row, get your plans together, release and reconcile the things that are really bothering you or are cumbersome or the things you procrastinate about. I've been saying that now for six months because I kept saying in March, the energy changes and you're not going to be able to have a do over. You're not going to be able to go back and reconcile or seal those cracks. And the world is going to just move forward. And if you have any dreams or goals that you want to do, you really want to make sure you're in a place where your energy is all tidied and neatened up and the porch is cleared off so that you can do what you got to do. Well, this is that time now. We're in go mode and it's not slowing down for anybody. The train is leaving the station. We have Saturn in Pisces now and Pluto's going into Aquarius March 25th. So this week we get rocking and rolling. A lot of things are going to start to get shook up and shaken and stirred. And you're also going to see with this triangulation that we have going on, a lot of different conflicts, you're going to see that people will be working themselves into certain types of anger. Um, you want to get your structures in place to complete your dreams for the future. This is a last ditch effort. Um, if there's anything going on in your life that's a major conflict right now, and you find that you're just going around in circles, not being able to resolve it, step away. Step away from it. Take the day off of work. Take the day off from the family and then go back to it. This is a time when your energy is really best spent putting everything together that you need in order to make your dreams come true for the future. When Pluto goes into Aquarius on the 25th, 
it's going to give us a little glimpse of what it's going to be doing for the next 20 years in our lives. And then after a few months, it goes back to Capricorn because it's going to retrograde. But this time period is the glimpse of what the next 20 years are going to be like. So you really want to make sure that you're paying attention. You're staying out of as much conflict as you can. A lot of people are going to be angry. They're going to be seeing things in a really new perspective and things are going to be revealed and they're not going to handle it well. So be that person that really handles it well. Um, this is a week of aha moments, but tough ones. They're going to be tough aha moments. I'm sad to say all this, but it is coming into fruition. But if you are grounded in your own free will, if you're grounded in your own dreams and hopes, then you can really utilize all this intense energy for assertion into your future and to put your head down and focus and really get done what you need to get done. Uh, Tuesday and Friday are our most intense days. Uh, Mars and Neptune square for the third time since October. So think about what was going on uh, last August and around October 12th. Those are the things that are going to actually culminate and get tied up right now and, and be finally done for the third time. Uh, this is also an energy when Mars and Neptune unite around Tuesday. This is an energy of deception. It's deception being revealed. It's also um, seeing things that you haven't seen before. I'm going to tell you, we're all going to get shown things this week that we were like, some of them, some of it's going to be, uh, yeah, I kind of thought that was going to happen, but I was hoping it wasn't. And other things are going to be like, yeah, I knew it. I knew it all along. And now I know it for sure. It's definitely a kind of energy where what was dece deceived and deception is going to be revealed. It's very interesting to me that we have Trump indictments coming out this week. I mean, you can't make up this energy. So it's going to be really interesting to see what becomes revealed on that. Um, this is really about gleaning new ideas from things we didn't see before. You know, it's it's not just a metaphor that Saturn and, and Pluto can't see each other right now. They're still working on energy. They're still doing things in our chart. And what they're doing is they're revealing a lot of things that have been coming for a long time. And when we see that revelation, we can either take it in stride and use it to bring ourselves forward into a more meaningful place, or we can become bitter and, and go into escapism over it. It's your choice. Um, Wednesday, the fog starts to clear. Wednesday, these things that start to be revealed and are going to be revealed as the week continues, the fog really starts to clear and it leads us into that Thursday and Friday, which are really intense days. We've got a Mercury conjunct Neptune. If you have any planets at the end of Pisces, that's going to be really affected on you. Again, clarity from Thursday on with all these things that have finally come to light. They've shaken us, shaken us up. They've rocked us. They've rolled us. Now we're adjusting a little bit and we know what we have to do with them by Thursday, Friday. Now the action comes in. So we get these things revealed. We're maybe upset or we're angry or we're like, wow, I knew it was going to happen, but I wasn't sure or whatever the shocking thing that happens is or the revelation comes in. And by Thursday, Friday, we're ready to take action on them. And what I'm going to tell you is that this is a sun square Mars energy. The sun is squaring Mars. It's having a conversation of tension with the planet that gives us our get up and go. Sun is our life force. So we can overdo it in this energy. So make sure that anything that you do is really grounded in love and you're moving forward that way because this comes on the heels of a Venus square to Pluto in the last degrees of, um, of Cap and it's an Aries. And it's like, this is real harsh stuff. Friday is like, I know it's St. Patrick's Day and I know a lot of people are going to be drinking. And I am going to tell you, it's going to be like war of words, like cutting words, like things that come out that you didn't mean to say. It's also something to do with the financial system. I wouldn't be surprised if another bank falls or something comes out and is revealed in the financial systems. The last time that we had Venus and Aries squaring Pluto and Capricorn was 248 years ago. So this is the last time for 248 years that this is actually going to happen in these two signs. So this is Aries Capricorn energy. It's fire, it's warlike, and it's our structures, it's banking, it's government. It's This is definitely a harsh energy and it wants to move something forward. It wants to take action. So 
and and a lot of this because this is Mars is finally out of retrograde. Remember, it was in Gemini retrograde for like seven months. So a lot of this can be something that's been brewing since August in your personal lives. Um, like I said, this is a hard week, but it's only hard if you make it, you know, drop into the heart, have some true compassion for whatever happens. If you find yourself in those triangular type of conflicts, have compassion for the other and, and for everyone in the, the thing. Um, cause this is really a week where you're going to find out a lot of stuff. We're going to find out a lot of stuff globally, and we're going to find out a lot of stuff personally and suspicions come through. And once they're named, once they're revealed, you can take action. And that's the good part of it. That's the clarity of this as it comes in. Um, this also, because you have that Venus square Pluto late in the day on Thursday into Friday, that's that harsh energy. That's also an energy um, that makes our illusions come forward. And that's really interesting to me because that aligns with the uh, Saturn going into Pisces energy. So if you want to understand more about that, go on to my Facebook page, uh, Georgia Rose, and I have a long post there about that energy. It's titled The Loss of Innocence. And so what this energy is, is really about the illusions coming forward. You know, things are revealed to us. It's tragic sometimes, or it's exciting sometimes, or it gives us an opportunity sometimes. But at the end of the day, it's something that's going to move us forward. And I really believe that the intention is always healing of some kind and expansion in our life for more love and deeper meaning. So even if we get a little speed bump or we get pushed to the envelope, just know that this is all happening to bring us forward into a new day, a new world, a new birth. And don't resist that because it's our resistance of things like this that make us stagnant and stuck and really in challenge and really tragic. You know, it makes us hurt. It gives us pain. When we flow with it and we can open ourselves up to more expansion, we really get clarity and we move forward and we enrich our lives. And then as the, um, week goes through as if all this wasn't enough. Then on Friday, we've got Sun, Mercury, and Neptune all together in the same place in Pisces. And I hate to say it, but this is clarity, but it's also sorrow. It's also can be treachery. Um, this is, you know, maybe seeing the truth and having a moment of sadness, of sorrow about it, but then we're going to pick ourselves up by our bootstraps and move on. And haven't we all done that so many times in our life? And hasn't that always been some of the greatest gifts we could ever achieve is coming from that adversity and really pulling ourselves forward. So if anything like that touches on you this week, I am going to just set the intention and set some hearts up to everybody that this energy comes to us with complete and total gentleness and ease. And then of course, after, um, we have all this happening on Friday. We have Mercury combust the sun and Mercury is our minds. The sun is our life force. When we have Mercury combust the sun, this actually is an energy that can be used for very high intelligence, smart, strategic thinking. So whatever has befallen us in the five days before that roller coaster we've been on, the clarity that we've now been given, the illusion is burst. And once we start getting into Friday, even though we've got that square that makes, you know, war of words and a lot of aggression, a lot of angry energy, it also has the ability to give us smarts, to give us strategic thinking, to put us in line with our greatest intellect. And so if you use it for the higher octave, that could be really good. But I will honestly tell you that this energy can be used for destruction or it can be used to put in, in, in action, in physical form, your deepest and strongest dreams. That's how intense and strong this energy is. And that's the week in a nutshell. You can use your superpower for good, or you can use your superpowers for evil. They are very intense this week. So make sure you choose the right way, the right way of thinking and right attitude, love, right? Um, on Friday, especially what I'm going to say to you, because this is a lot of emotion, it's an emotional day. You're motivated by emotion. Even that intellectual thinking, your strategy is motivated by emotion. It is a day to avoid anyone with mental illness. It's a day to avoid, um, anything that is someone who has rages or is angry a lot. It's a day to really avoid any kind of open enemy that you have. 
if this is a day, um, especially if you think something is being hidden from you, you're worried about or suspicious about something, that is a day where you need to just stay home. I know it's St. Patrick's Day, but that's a day you need to stay home, close your front door, journal, work on your dreams and your visions. All right. And that's about it. Saturday eases the energy up. I have a call I'm going to take in one minute. Um, Saturn starts to bring us into, oh, that's what's going on. Now I can deal with it. We have all the revelation. We've got all the clarity and we really start to move forward. The sun energizes. It enters Aries in a few days after Saturday. And that is a fierce energy. It's a warrior energy. It's an energy of clarity. It's an energy of truth, even though it's tough truth. But we have a new moon on the 21st, which is also in, I believe, Aries. And that brings this all to a beautiful space where we can set a new intention and a seed for all of this intensity and all of this energy going into a space where things have been revealed. We know what we're dealing with. We now know what's going on. We know how we can fit this into our future and we're ready to mold it to what we really need it to be. We're ambitious, we're warriors, and we're ready to take on the world. Nothing is going to get us down. And that has been the energy of this past week. So I hope you enjoyed that soap opera because that's what this week is going to be. So is my caller still there? My caller is still here. Hi, caller. Are you, st are you still there? It's Georgia Rose in the Soul Space. Is it the Hi, it's Georgia Rose. Hi, Georgia. It's Pauline. Oh, hi, Pauline. How are you? Oh, I wasn't sure. I was, I was just listening. Just put. I, I just thought, you know, maybe. Yeah, I wanted I to finish my. I, call. I was trying to finish my train of thought because I was like, I just have to finish this train of thought. Otherwise, I'll never remember what I was talking about. How are you doing? Yeah. How are you feeling in this energy? Are you feeling any change? Uh, no, actually, it's pretty good. I've been doing a lot of my uh, shadow work, so I don't think that That's much. I actually perfect. was going to have that five on because I can't find Juno on my chart. I don't even know the symbol for Juno. I will, I can post it. I'll post it in the comments later. It's a number that you have to use for Juno and I'll post that so that you can see where it is in your chart. Okay. So yeah, well, Juno's I really, Chiron Juno, Juno. was doing something that that was, I don't know, but I, I actually had to not stay on after a few, um, of your, I didn't stay on for most of it. So I don't, oh, good. I don't know what you had like, good. said. Anything about Chiron and I was just wondering about Chiron. Cause yes, Chiron is actually also playing a part in this week. Um, if anybody out there has been feeling like, you know, sometimes we have, I, like, for instance, I've lost my dog last year. It's been a year already. But for some reason, this past few days, even though it's the anniversary of that time, I didn't think it would be so intense for me. And for some reason, the energy of my dog and that wound has been coming up a lot. And I'm hearing from a lot of uh, clients, friends, associates, that a lot of our wounds are coming up again. Um, things from the past being repeated just to like, we, we're hurting a little bit. We're feeling soft. We're feeling a little fragile. And I feel that. I you lost your dog. I didn't realize that. Oh yeah. It's been a year. mentioned it and it totally went over my head. I remember. Oh no, that's okay. Sparky's like, still with me. He's, 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 we were, I was talking to one of my friends about Sparky the other day. And I know you guys who are pet lovers will totally understand this. Sparky's still walking around my house. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> you know. He so, chose your next one, right? He helped. He yeah, I'm him. wondering about that because you know it's so funny because he's coming in so strong. As I was saying this week, and I know he's trying to tell me something, and I keep praying to God and I keep saying, Jesus, please just you know let me hear it because I'm not hearing it, you know, because I get emotional. So um, hopefully we'll get Sparky's message, and when I find out what it is, yeah, I'll tell he's everybody. Be a walk into the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My one, right and you know what's so funny is my one regret is that I never brought Sparky onto the show. And I always thought he could like sit in a chair next to me because he was really that type of dog. And um, I just thought it would be Wait really cute. I could have sworn he did show. He did come onto the show. I remember. No, him. no, he didn't. No. He might have been in one of my videos, yeah, but he was never in soul space. But he might have been on one of my videos. But um, but anyway, the planet Chiron is definitely a planet that brings up our old wounds, and that is playing in this week. So if anybody feels a little sensitive about around anything that they've been doing or that happened in the last little while or even something from childhood, you're going to um, find that it'll come up again. So now, do you have a specific question tonight, Pauline? Yeah, because my Chiron is 28 degrees in the seventh house. Okay. So, so Chiron in the seventh oh, house. Uh, let me speak to that. Chiron in the seventh house. I keep looking on camera. My shirt's wrinkled, so I had to fix it. Um, 
Chiron in right. the seventh house has to do with relationships and partnerships. So it can mean that you will find deep healing in relationships and that in your relationship with others, that's going to bring healing to you of something that you brought into this world to heal. So that can be trust, you know, or an abandonment issue that becomes reconciled through another. Um, so Chiron in that area of the chart usually means that you will find deep healing in relationship. Okay, it's not sister's family, like uh, in that it, house. It, it could be, be the seventh usually isn't, usually the third house is the house of siblings, cousins, etc. Mm -hmm. Mother, what about mother? Mother is that usually is. The, um, the fourth house most of the time. Oh. Father is usually the tenth house. Fourth house is home, family, mother. Yeah. I'm getting that I got like deep Chiron wounds from my galactic. Uh, when I my my incarnation from there, that's where my and that could really about. be what ha what is the um sign of I'm, your seventh I'm, house? I'm born near the galactic center, practically too. So what and is the, the um, twenty eight degrees as well? Yeah, the twenty seventh degree. So what um sign is the seventh house for you? Aquarius. Okay, so yes, absolutely, galactic energy would be playing into that. Um, Aquarius and you know we just had Saturn go into Aquarius so you're going through Saturn um I mean Saturn just went into Pisces it left Aquarius so now you're releasing that energy so anything to do with Aquarius is very much uh, interplanetary galactic energy off planet energy Aquarian energy is the unique the um the anomaly the thing that doesn't make sense all the time even though it's scientific Aquarius is the new thing the thing that hasn't been discovered yet etc so you will have quirky partners and you will like things to do with aliens and things like that will be very prominent in your chart. And because of these 28 degrees, the series and uh, Chiron are both in the seventh house and they're off, they're all 28 degrees, like my sun sign. Yeah. So, so you're definitely like tuned into that energy. I would say when you meditate, you should probably journey and maybe bring in galactic energy. However, be careful doing that and protect because not all off planet all energy is, is, is good. That's what I, I'm looking for somebody to do aggression with me, but they have to be able to do it that way. Yeah, it has to be done very and carefully. It can't be anybody. Yeah, you're right. I know. you got to be very Yeah. Careful. So I'm, I am pulled a couple of cards can for I you. Can I a reading with you with, with the galactic and or do you have um, you, uh, It's you not my forte. I mean, I might be able to tell some things, but it's not my forte. Um, if I, I believe as far as the galactic energy goes, maybe you want to follow some people online that really are very prominent with that. There is a girl that works a lot with the Palades and stuff on Long Island. Her name is Cassandra. Um, I can send you her, her Facebook page. She even did a, a deck of cards like I did, which are all galactic. But I always okay. find that the galactic energy is so unique because there's so many different types of alien forms off planet energies, planets, solar systems that sometimes you really have to meditate to find out what exactly is, you know, trying to communicate with you because someone you else may not pick it up. In health? I was just thinking, since you deal with Reiki, do you ever do, I don't know if you ever specialize in medical. Could you like look at medical stuff? Yes, That's absolutely can do that. Also, I'm glad that you said that. You were actually supposed to say that to me because because whenever we have a lot of different planets changing signs, health issues will come up. So this month especially can be health issues, like something that's been brewing will rupture or if you have something where, you know, a bone that's weak, it will break or by the same token, maybe something that you have been nursing along for a long time will heal because the energies are all changing and they're changing very rapidly. So health issues are very important this, this month. Cool. Yeah. That's right. Virgo, right? You went to the full moon in Virgo. Yeah. Isn't especially it? that. Yeah. So I just picked two cards for you. And one was the queen of pentacles, which I feel, you know, you were asking about mother energy. And I think this card came up because of that. I believe that, you know, mother energy is very much um, linked to the queen of pentacles. She's a very motherly queen, even though that she's grounded in earth energy. Um, it's an energy for me of abundance. And there's always roses surrounding the queen of pentacles, which to me means mother energy. And then based on the galactic conversation we were just having, this soul card that I just pulled really does lead me to confirm that you have a lot of galactic energy around you and trying to speak to you. Because when you look on camera, Pauline, this card has a figure, which I'm identifying as you, and all of these faces or light beings around the head of the card. And you can see they're all like trying to connect. This is a card of connection. It's a card of 
off yeah. planet galactic I was told connection that spirit guides doctors want to, ascended healers want to work with me so i until i can connect i just got to get healed all the other galactic uh, cosmic whatever it is regression i need because i'm not moving forward there's something in me that's afraid well you and need to need yeah to that's that. blocking it so you need to really do a lot of heart work on the heart chakra you know if you can try and meditate in compassion um, there's a lot of meditations online that will do that to open the heart chakra, to put compassion in that area of your life, because that's what you have to work on. Once you strengthen the heart chakra, everything will fall into place for you. And don't, that makes sense. and also learn to be your own counsel. And by that, I mean, mm -hmm. don't be so quick to um, always go to others and gurus and seeking out others. That's exactly. That's what I've been doing. I, only, I, I try to book someone there. I said, I'm always booking people with discussion. I said, no, you've got to go in and do it. This, this, you this, have this, to this, do this, that. This, Otherwise, you won't develop the discernment to see if that person is truthful. So work on yourself yeah. first, you know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. And so that's much. for everybody. <laughs> if we don't have a solid foundation, whenever you're doing any work in metaphysical uh, uh, you know, modalities, whether it's Reiki or anything, always make sure the strongest foundation is yours and that you are grounded in your own truth, your own light and your own being. That is the only place of safety and security for you when you're working in other realms. You can't, you can't rely on another person to bring you there or bring you back. You have to be in your own foundation. So everybody just remember that. So thank you so much for calling in tonight, Pauline. Thank you. Good night. Good night. So I'm going to go to my comments and see what's on here. We're going to go to cards in like two seconds. Oh, Anne lost Boomer. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, that was last year on the same time. Hi, welcome to the Soul oh, Space. Anne lost Boomer. Hi. I'm so sorry. How are oh, you? That was last year on the same time. Hi, welcome to the Soul I'm good. How are you? Who's this? This Hi. is Georgia Rose in the Soul How Space. Are you? I'm good. Oh, Georgia, I'm watching you live over here. I hear that. You have to turn your TV or radio or computer down. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I have no idea who I got, this is. I did. <laughs> okay, now who am I talking to? Linda. Linda, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. You had a good time at the Arboretum? I didn't go to the Arboretum. Oh, I thought you did. Okay, I thought I saw something on your page. That was probably another Linda. It's okay. So <laughs> Yeah, but you know what Linda this is? You know what, who Linda this is? I thought you were Camarada. No, no, Linda Diamore. Oh, my favorite, I'm... one of my favorite people in the world. Ah. <laughs> I Linda Demore oh. is like the best energy. She's like when you walk in a room, it's like Aww. I see a big huge heart. You're just like a whole heart. So I'm so Aww. glad that you caught the show. Yeah, I, you know what? I just popped on and I'm like, oh my god! You know what? I'm gonna call in because I miss you. Oh, uh, <laughs> I miss you too. You know, and I have the bug. I need to do some events and get everybody together again. I've been really thinking about that a lot. It's been coming in so forcefully for me. So. We're definitely uh, going to get everybody uh, together again. Oh, uh, yes. I can't wait. We got to make that happen for sure. We absolutely so I do. Thought, I, I came in late, so I know I, you were talking about Chiron and all that. And yeah. So what's happening I, with I, you? I, oh, my God, Georgia. The, it's everything around me. It's my family. Yeah. My son. I'm worried about my son. We're going to have to look at your fourth house when, when I, when I see you, cause that's definitely going to be in your chart. Mm -hmm. I got to do your chart for you. Um, that's also the energy. You know, it's funny because I see people online saying I'm out of sorts. I, I, you know, it's been all week. That's the energy right now. We're just at the things around us, you know? Um, but the great yeah. thing about you is that you are very grounded, but I'm going to pull some cards for you. Let's focus on son and family and I'm going to pull some cards to see what's going on. Okay. Yeah. Oop. Card two cards fell out of the deck. You know, three cards fell out of the deck. You know what that means. One of the cards that fell out of the deck was the two Ooh. two of swords. <laughs> and I feel like um something's gonna be revealed for you. And if it's gonna be revealed, it's gonna be this week because this is the week of everything being revealed. So I think that mm. especially where Sun is concerned, there's something that you don't know the whole story. But I don't feel like yeah. it's bad. Yeah. I feel like when this when this 
when whatever it is is revealed, I feel the energy around it is you're actually glad that you know. Okay. So it's something that I feel almost relieves the tension, if that's a possibility. I also makes, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I feel like and I feel like it's something you kind of know, but you're not sure it could go either way. But I, I feel like it's more positive than negative once you receive the the um, revelation, once you see receive the news of whatever this is. So now one of the other things I'm going to say to you is that whatever you've been working really hard on is coming to fruition because I don't know if that's something to do with a project or whatever, but I'm seeing cards that are all coins and, and pentacles, but you know, cause you read too, I know you do that. That can mean, yeah. that can mean actual finances coming and being relieved, or it can mean some other kind of abundance, but I'm getting the cards that flew out of the deck were all pentacles, which is, which is money. Wow. Yeah. So if there's some, if something to do with your family situation is also like the, I feel like the main issue isn't financial, but it has some kind of a financial influence in some way. I feel like it works out really well because I feel like you're going to feel, find something beneficial to you happening. That's true. Okay. I will, I'll know all about that. That is so true. Okay. I have been working on things and I've talked with, uh, I said, I meditate. I asked the universe, is this what I'm supposed to do more of because I want to, you know, the yeah. meetings. Yeah. I out of the blue, uh, the different people calling for readings. And I'm like, even this morning when I was driving to my job, I thought, wow. I, I And if you know how rewarding it is to help people and, and being and, where I work, especially it's right. Just, I am, I feel blessed. And Linda, oh, as you're talking about, you know, doing more of what you love, another pentacle card came in and it was the two of pentacles, which you know means that you're going to have enough money and you're in balance. So, yes. and the energy in the world right now with the planets and astrology is we're really supposed to step into our purpose and use our life well with the purpose we're given. And Saturn in Pisces, mm -hmm. there's something I wrote on my page about this is really going to heighten spiritual connections for people. So you're going to find anyone who is authentically a healer, a yogi, a reader, an astrologer, um, a, a, a practitioner of any kind of modality, which has a connection to source, to spirit. As long as you are love-based and authentic, you are going to find people being drawn to you. It's the people who yeah. are not transparent that are going to have a very hard time trying to expand those modalities. And I know how sincere mm -hmm. you are, so you're going to have abundance mm -hmm. in this next while. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I just, you know what? Like you said, I don't we don't always know about our own family. Oh yeah. But like you said, I really believe what you're saying to me about my son. And I feel something coming. And you just like confirmed, confirmed it, it. Because I know something's going on with him. And the one thing I want to say in closing, because I have other people who want cards, but the one thing I want to yes. say in closing is that I also feel the reason why the energy around your family and your home is being intensified is to show you that you need to put yourself first a little bit. It's almost like it's going to, it will continue to reach an intolerable level. Like the people around you are getting so intense and problematic because I believe spirit wants you to step out a little bit of that. And really okay. follow your own course because sometimes what will happen in life is, you know, spirit will intensify an energy so that we have to deal with it, but not necessarily in the way we think. Like it might intensify and we might think, oh my God, I got to take care of this. I got to take care of this. But the real reason they're intensifying it is so that we need to walk away. Yes. So you're right. Take that with you. Absolutely. Because I really Thank feel like you, this is your time. Thank you so much. All right, sweetie, take care. <laughs> okay, you too. Bye-bye. So I'm going to go Bye. really quick. I don't know what time it is because my watch went dead. Um, I have so many people on tonight. I want to say hi to everybody first. Renee, Janine, Sarah. I have Jackie on here. Joanne, Amaya. I have, um, I can't pronounce that name. <laughs> Last name is Karis. Michelle, everybody's on here watching me tonight. I love it, love it, love it. And I thank you so much for supporting this and my work and everything. Um, I'm just going to scroll through because I think I answered a lot of those questions. Sherry's online, Colleen. I have Mickey. Anne's on. 
So tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the bottom and go up. Joanne Odie is on. Oh, wow. I haven't seen so many of these people in so long. Christine's on. I'm going to start from the bottom up because I always go from the top down and then I don't get to, um, I miss a lot of people. So I'm going to start with Michelle, my yoga buddy from my yoga studio. How are we doing on time, Bob? He just gave me a beautiful clock. <laughs> I have the best producer ever. And I just want to say to everybody out there, um, we kind of got some bad news in the studio today and someone very close to Bobby. So I just want everybody to just, you know, maybe take a minute and just send some real love to him. And if you can just kind of go into his heart space and give him some energy of healing because um, kind of a rough, rough day, going to go through a little bit of a rough time. Um, and we'll talk about it on another show, but just want to uh, send some loving out to Bobby LaSara tonight. All right. Um, so Michelle, I picked this beautiful soul card for you. And this card, I, I just, I feel like this is just so for you because I, you know, I'm in yoga teacher training now. We talk a lot about the light within and, and the journey that we're on. And I know Michelle is one of my yoga teachers and this card is this being, and you can see this beautiful, you know, heart, um, almost like the sacred heart of Jesus in the middle of the chest, the sacred heart of Jesus and all flames around this person. And for some reason I was just led to pick a soul card instead of the regular tarot. And I feel like this card is just really you surrounded by spirit and surrounded by love and <clears throat> just the flame within you and the light within you. And so I'm going to say if, even if things feel a little bit emotional, like we have this water in the bottom of the card, even if it might be a little bit of an emotional week for you, tap into that beautiful inner heart, that angel that's in your heart, because you have so much strength there. And I topped that with when I pulled a tarot card, it was the Queen of Pentacles, which I had just pulled for Linda. And even though I shed the sh um, shuffled the deck, it came up again. This is a card of abundance. It's strong feminine. It's a card of um, new beliefs and abundance. So this with this card is really speaking to you that do not underestimate the power you have within because you are in a really powerful energetic phase right now. So use that really well and get on the mat and use it because you really have a strong um, ability to connect now with source and you're going to feel that. So I send you that blessing. What a beautiful, beautiful cards for you. And that was for Michelle. Um, yeah, please send prayers to Bobby. Um, we had a loss here today and Christine Faison, her cousin, Joanne is on. I'm going to pick a card for Joanne and Christine separately. First I'll do Joanne. All right. Joanne Odea, one of my very good friends, one of the best dancers we have around when we go out. She's like the best dancer. Love that joy that she brings to all of us. Okay. Wow. Joanne, I got the 10 of cups. The 10 of cups is the soulmate card. This is a card of relationship, marriage, um, commitment. It's moving things along in that regard. So I'm going to tell you that if um, this week can be a very intense week. So I pulled this card and it's right side up for me. I think this means that something impending may be coming. And the other thing I will tell you is if any energies for everybody out there, if any energies of something that happened in the last few months with a partnership or even a friendship or anything was kind of rocky or split, now the energy will come back around because um, Mercury, uh, Mars rather, is going out of retrograde. I just wanted to say that because I forgot to say it before. But for Joanne in particular, I feel like there's a really great card. Like you're going to have a closer relationship to someone in your sphere that you're already close to. So there's something coming in for you that's a very much a soulmate, close kind of relationship. The other thing I want to tell you is look towards your future because this is a relationship that's long term. It's something that comes that and and is going to be with you for a very long time. It could be a family relationship or it could also be a um, T just walked in. She has a show after me or it could be um, a romantic partnership and the way this energy is going, I just pulled the Empress, which is Venus. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and I'm going to say romantic partnership. If you And I know you've been in a relationship for a, a while and I'm going to say there may be some movement forward in that relationship. You may find yourself um, maybe 
being more committed or just having a turning point of some kind for the better. So um, take those three beautiful cards with you because I can't wait to hear what's going to happen because something's going to happen with that and it's for the for good. So take that with you. Next cards I'm going to pull are for Christine Faye, my beautiful Christine. Um, a lot of us are having a little bit of a rough week. I saw that in the comments, Christine. Uh, it's just intense, 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 and it's going to build up till Friday. So, you know, I know you dog sit and I love the doggies that you put up because they always just touch my heart. Maybe like be around animals, kind of keep quiet. I intend to do that for the next few days. I know they're having, I keep, I'm going to shuffle again because I keep pulling that queen of pentacles. Um, I know for me, they're having a party in my office on Friday and I was going to go and I bought something to bring. And now I'm like, I don't know, with this energy, I may just like stay home. <laughs> so putting that out there. Okay, so we got the devil card for you, Christine. And you know, the devil does not actually mean the actual devil. What this is, is a card that sometimes comes out when we are holding ourselves back, letting our mind do all the work. You know, my, my yoga teacher, Jackie, always says the mind will always lie to you. So you want to drop into your heart space because you could be doing a little bit of self-imposed imprisonment. And I don't mean that literally like, you know, making yourself be hermit or stay in the house. I mean it like you're, you have a limiting belief about something. So go back into your energy, back into that space that's a safe place for you within you and really look at yourself and see yourself for who you are and the powerful, beautiful goddess that you are, because I feel like your limiting beliefs are coming up a little bit with this card. The next card that I wanted to pull is that I pulled from the tarot is the um, six of swords. This is a card of going away from an emotional situation or a short distance travel. So if there's something weighing heavily on your mind, make sure that you um, are putting it in perspective and not limiting yourself with it and allowing it to come in and be hypercritical or not constructive of you. Okay. Uh, or constructive of you make it like um, something that is constructive, not destructive. I'm sorry. I misspoke. I'm going to pull a, a, um, a uh, soul card to wrap up the reading. Okay, so yeah, so here's the soul card that I pulled for you. And if you look at this soul card, it kind of really talks about what I'm talking about. You have all this light around you, but you're kind of solo, like you're coming out of a cave. But yet the person in this um, card is very confident. He's standing tall with this big staff, this big wand. And this also is very symbolic of the wand card that I just picked for you. Wands are movement and wands are energy. So you want to go forward. If you look really carefully at the wand in this particular card, you will see that this woman, female warrior type type being, there's all like a tree or new growth on the wand. So this is moving forward to new growth, but doing so within your own space and your own confidence and your own really strong being, taking the time to go within and then come, come out. All right. So that's our show for tonight, everybody. You can find me on Zenkuda Soul Space on Facebook, Zenkuda um, Official on Instagram, and Zenkuda on YouTube, where I always keep posting about the energy, and it's all meant to bring us to a place of healing and expansion of love in our life. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know you can find here, me right back here in the Soul Space next Monday, and I look forward to seeing every one of you. And please do send some love to everyone here in the uh, Strong Island family tonight, really needing it. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.